Welcome to the Seller Edition number 17. Jose, did you like that intro? I love that intro. Yeah. And uh, we made it through 17 editions now. Pretty amazing. Yeah. We're, we're getting through them. 17, 18, 19, 20. We've got some very exciting things planned for uh, the Seller 20. There's so much that we've got enough uh, yeah. to do editions pretty much every week, but we won't hammer everyone with editions every week. No. Right? No. So, uh, what have we got today, John? So, what are we this week I wanted to kind of focus on the old alliance, Jose, because I guess it's a, it's a new line to the shop, a new independent model that we're presenting in Australia, and it's a really exciting one. So, maybe tell us a little bit about old alliance. Well, um, we have had a relationship with Emmanuel, the owner of the old alliance in Singapore, for a long time. Uh, of course, his uh, production is very small. Um, and uh, after, um, you know, uh, going back and forth with him, he decided to give us a kind of a decent allocation, probably the best and biggest allocation we ever had of some products that he still has uh, in stock from back in the day. And then some of the new bottlings, uh, especially rums, Calvados and, and that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, very excited to get this. I would consider maybe, you know, one of the best bottlers. Yeah. Uh, in the world, high, high, really highly regarded, um, and it's whiskey by connoisseurs, you know, for connoisseurs. Yeah, that's that's what an epic is. stuff. Yeah, a- excellent stuff. And so I thought we'd, we'd bring out four um, bottles. There's there's a lot more that have come in, but four bottles that I thought were particularly interesting um, for us to have a look at for the seller. But of course, um, jump on the website and have a look at all the bottlings that have come in because they're all sensational. Um, but the four I thought we'd chat about today and we put in the cellar. Um, we'll start with the Ardmore here, I thought was very interesting. Um, Ardmore, uh, bottled by the uh, whiskey agency for uh, the Old Alliance and Three Rivers, uh, 21 years old. This is the style of Ardmore that um, is reminiscent of old uh, Isla styles. Um, you know, uh, very little peat and, 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 and quite fruity and uh, yeah. absolutely stunning. Yeah. You know, it's like that. That I remember the Admiral we have from Whiskey Agency. Yes. Uh, uh, two years ago. Well, you know, if you remember that Admiral, you should not let this one go. Even, even the nectar as well. I've heard we haven't quite tasted this one yet, but I've heard that there is like quite a good fruit component to it as well. So I'm excited for us to crack one of those yeah. open. One we have cracked open, and Jose, do you feel like a dram? Oh yes, of course. I always feel like a dram. Absolutely. Yeah. Is um, the Brooklady organic, organic barley? barley. So, you know, this is this could potentially be one of the first Blue Gladi organic barleys I've seen independently bottled. Yeah. Just making the, um, it's just clarifying that this organic barley, not just regular barley, it which is, is pretty amazing. It is very, very amazing. Uh, yes, this still in 2012, bottled in 21, um, you know, pretty amazing uh, mm. whiskey. Quite, quite rare. They're from Blue Gladi fans. You so know, much, so much beautiful salt. And old school maltiness on the palate. You know, mm. this is like whiskey from a day gone by almost. It's it's, it's really great stuff. Um, Maybe a little bit of leave of peat in there, but on the palate, on the nose, almost nothing. Just really, really, really fruity Brugladi, One of the distilleries that, um, as we all know, it's not that often that you find Brugladi on independent bottlings. Um, mm. Here you got a pedigree bottle uh, from Emmanuel. You know, it's like a seal of quality. Yeah, when he puts his name on the bottles. As rare as hen's teeth, as you would say, Jose. As rare as hen's teeth. Yeah, you don't say it too often. Moving on from that, uh, we got a Panama Rum, uh, 13-year-old bottle by Corman Collins. um, Stunning rum. uh, Very rich, deep. Rich, uh, rum, which was everything you'd expect. Yeah, Um, correct. Stunning. mm -hmm. Uh, Again, uh, if you like that sort of continental style rum, um, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Yep. And uh, big guns. The big gun here. So the Old Alliance are the distributor for Gosperin um, in Singapore. And they obviously have an exceptional relationship. And there's yep. a bit of a taste for Armagnacs, Cognacs in, in Singapore. It's, it's a really big part of um, their drinking culture over there. So it's no doubt that we're going to see some really sensational Cognacs and Armagnacs from uh, the Old Alliance. And this is, is one. And we dip our toe on it because we got the bigger age statements. Yes. But we dip our toe there, you know, uh, when we open this one for a tasting that we're going to tell you a little bit. This is a Grosperin 1972, uh, bottled in 2021. So um, stunning. This is 
uh, heaps of fruit, desiccated fruits, yeah. uh, nuts, uh, a bit of that uh, nail polish, which I kind of yeah. like a lot. And, you know, um, layers upon layers upon layers. Yeah. And the, the length on this one, it, it doesn't finish. It just keeps going. Is that if you go one, two, uh, drink a little bit. You, just, you, you need quite a bit in there to warm it up with a glass seat. Yeah. And nose and nose, you know, it's an it's a, a outstanding yeah. bottle. And look, 49-year-old Armagnac, it's, it's not, I guess, the, um, the, by any means, most affordable bottle going around, but with 49-year-old age statement, um, it's probably one of the best priced, if you, if you know what I mean. For there to be so much time... I'm very exclusive bottling. We're talking about we got only maybe around three bottles left of this because it went ballistic. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's a couple left. It smells kind of a little bit like wine gums on the nose to me, which I, I really like. Um, so that's the four bottles I thought we'd pull out. Um, and we do of course have the Old Alliance tasting, which we'll talk about very shortly. But before we jump into chatting about the Old Alliance tasting, Jose, it's time for the samples of the week. Ring a ding ding. The samples of the week. So you guys know that on every, um, uh, seller, we choose a couple of bottles that we will uh, kind of rare bottles that we decide to sell a few samples to our supporters of yeah. the seller. So, what do you prepare for this? Yeah, channel? I mean, particularly now without people being able to come to the bar, we've got so many um, Castavino's friends interstate too. So, this is an opportunity for almost the bar to come to you, and we're not going to bring out um, samples that aren't really excellent for this. And so, we have done that today. Um, only six 15 mil samples of this absolutely, absolutely stunning, more like over 15 year old from the Artist 6 series. And this is just a bomb. This is a bottle I've been keeping away from everyone pretty much for a long time. It's a stunning, yeah. more like meaty, rich, yeah. big, uh, you know, it's a senior whiskey. Say, everything you want a more like is that robust spirit, uh, Huge, you know, spicy back yes. to it. Uh, spice, uh, kind of furniture shop smell, um, uh, uh, again, uh, a bit of a paint thinner together with cashew nuts. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's yeah. a big, it's a big whiskey and, uh, it's a bottle of 55.9% yep. more like, you know, so you're getting a big treat there. These bottles don't come around very often anymore. Uh, this is the last bottle we bought. We don't have any in storage yep. either, so unfortunately. And six, six samples going out to the lovely folk out there. Um, thanks for, for letting a couple of those samples go, Jose, because I know you could probably just as easily keep that for yourself. Um, the other one is a little Encada. Um, Encantada. That's what I said, Encantada. Oh, good. Um, uh, 1982 Armagnac. Um, Domaine de Monet, which is one of my favourite domains, Jose. Yeah, so um, La Encantada is an independent bottler of Armagnac. Um, basically what they do is um, Armagnac has this thing that there's a lot of growers that you would never hear of. Uh, they only make uh, Armagnac just for themselves, the family, uh, and then they sell to um, other bigger makers uh, for producing bigger battings, you know, because they don't want to develop their own brand or they will have a cellar door and pretty much that's it. So La Encantada, they visit those little domains, they buy special parts that they like and you can taste those uh, domains that unless you go to France and to their cellar door, you will not be able to buy a bottle of what they do. Uh, and this one, well, 1982, there we go, something that is very old. But this one was bottled, um, uh, I can't remember exactly, I think it was back in 2000. Uh, 18 maybe yeah. uh, only 94 bottles in the world we got of this and I do believe they were all gone or maybe there's like one full bottle left yeah. but if you want to taste it um, yeah I you think it's well worth giving it, one of the a go and I, and I think along with those sort of whiskies we'll definitely pull out be it something else like the cognac and armagnac or another little inquisitive uh, dram for you guys to be able to try as well. So, so that's the uh, end of the samples and the bottles we've got. Um, in terms of the the tastings coming up, we've got some absolutely incredible ones. The Old Alliance, we've harped on it about it for a little bit. There is only two tickets left, and if you wanted to grab them, um, you probably should do it now. We can express posts, which means you'll get them by next Wednesday. 
but any later than the end of this week, you might be in a bit of strife. And this tasting is one that is not to be missed out on. Yep, uh, exactly that. Jono, it's, uh, this is going to be an amazing tasting with one of yep. the most knowledgeable persons uh, there is about uh, the history of you know, whiskey, especially Scotch whiskey around the world. You know, Emmanuel mm-hmm. is an eminence on, on, on uh, the, the matter. So, yeah, and we, very we, excited we about... a little bit about these two, so we won't harp on about those two anymore now, but those are going to be in the tasting. So if you like the sound of it, get a little ticket and you'll be able to try them before you, you know, have to purchase a bottle too if you like them that much. And then uh, for the tasting, we got three big boys. Like if you <laughs> thought uh, the Brugladi and La were good, it's not even close to what. Well, we'll to we side. got this, again, they are, you know, good mates, the people from Three Rivers, uh, Kaz, who's a good friend also, um, uh, Kaz and Emmanuel. Yep. Uh, this uh, 1973 Space Side uh, mature in a bat, and it's one of those, you know, uh, berry, rancio, sherry, right. most likely fino, like super expressive and pretty, and just that umami saltiness. On the, that, I, that we already tasted this bottle, I reckon, maybe like three years ago in one tasting. Uh, this is one of those that, um, yeah, uh, it's a legendary. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a legendary bottle one day. Unfortunately, we sold that. The day we put them online straight away, but if you want to taste this, the tasting of Build Alliance is the time. Yep. Um, John. Well, uh, that's just exceptional. Pick another one. Out of those two, I mean, how can we? This Balmore Jose has the potential to be legendary. It's. I think uh, that is legendary it, already. It's an absolutely wild Balmore fruit. Not too much of that sort of like ash note to it or, or the peat. Um, it's just exquisite. It's it's in a level of its own that makes you realise where all the hype is around these Balmores. You know, these legendary White flowers, Balmores, pear. They're, they're not gone. There's, they're still about, and it's very exciting to be able to have this, one of the This is uh, probably the most, one of the most excited uh, Balmores I've been, uh, one of the Balmores I've been getting more excited of in the recent years because... Um, this is probably the closest you will get to probably uh, mid seventies, early seventies uh, style, which is almost unbeaten. You know, there's a bit of ash there, especially in the parlor, but then there's a lot of fruit, and you don't get to see that uh, more uh, style pretty much ever again. That's uh, it's unbelievable. And if you have not ever tasted that fruity style of Amor, uh, this is a good opportunity. And uh, maybe it's one or two bottles, or I think we sold the bottles, I don't know. Yep. I think I kept most of them when I tasted it, you know. Um, and lastly, the Kaulila, uh, 35 years old, by Karen Heads, you know. Next level. Uh, next level, uh, Kaulila Salt. Uh, a lot of personality, it's, um, you know, quite, no big one, it's like fruit, ash, peat, um, it just uh, it just makes me salivate. It's uh, everything. It's everything, as I think. Yeah. Well, bottled by, of course, Caden Hits, one of the best bottlers in yeah. um, Scotland. Uh, another very very senior bottle that we're gonna taste. So you know, yeah. for, for you to have an idea, this bottle worth around seventeen hundred dollars. This bottle's around fifteen hundred dollars. So and we don't have any. They gone pretty much. So um, this this bottle is around a thousand dollars. So this this uh this. Yeah. Is a very good value to be a tasting. Is absolutely, yeah. And with the manual on there as well, it's going to be fantastic. So only a couple of tickets left to that. They might all be gone by now. Um, but hope you can join us for that. It's going to be absolutely yeah. exceptional. We do have a couple of other tastings coming up. Um, one of the other ones is the Oldham Rare. Oldham Rare following Wednesday, I guess around two weeks from now, and we're kind of in the same boat with that one. Only a couple of tickets left, so that will sell out. Um, Old and Rares are one of the tastings we look forward to the most because it gives us a chance to take a bit of a glimpse back into an old world of whiskey, drams of a day gone by, and there's some absolute pearlers in this lineup. Jose. So, exactly. Um, that's all we're known for, the Old and Rare tastings, and, uh, well, we, we, we bring the big, the big guns today. Uh, we start with a, uh, Glenfiddich, uh, back from the 80s, uh, very classic style of single malt from the 80s, you know. Uh, this kind of style of whiskey is what makes Scotch malt whiskey great and known around the world. Particular bottling by Glenfiddich, which was or still is the biggest sold single malt in the world, which is amazing to know. Uh, this style 
Um, after that, uh, from our mate. Nectar of the Daily Jam from Mario, we've got a Little Mill. So Little Mill obviously plays distillery. We don't get the opportunity to try it all the time. And this is a bottle that... Well, has, we do try Little Mill. I mean, probably Just more, more often than some, but... Um, this is a bottle that was actually bottled almost 10 years ago now, 2013, for um, the Nectar of the Daily Drams, his sort of yearly release. Um, and it's become pretty legendary sort of in that little bit of time. And um, I guess Jose decided that now's the time and this is a perfect tasting um, for us to have a cracking little meal. Um, I love to open a little meal here and there. Yeah. I love it's a very underrated distillery back then. Uh, that's what it closed it. Um, you know, and it gives you this very... Usually, this very fresh and vegetal character of, 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 of whiskey, you know, um, which um, usually at this age of, you know, 20 years plus or 15, 18 years plus, um, it's very expressive. It's got oh, grass, yeah. hay, and, you know, stunning. all the good things. Another really sensational one is a 1996 Ben Nevis. We all know 1996 Ben Nevis is the, is the year for all these um, for all these indie bottlings. And this one for Santi Bar. Slightly older as well, 2016, so almost, you know, what, six, seven years ago now, it was bottled. Um, 20 years old and just an absolutely stunning example of what would be a bourbon barrel um, Ben Nevis from that 96 period. So we had this maybe four years ago, five years ago, we got some stock, then we sold it out, of course, 96 Ben Nevis, you know, and I had to freeze Pien's arm, you know, yeah. you know, to give me a few bottles back and, you know, got very few, I think we got three. We keep them for the store for an opportunity like this to open uh, a classic bottler, classic whiskey, you know, mm -hmm. 96 Ben Nevis by Sansibar, you know, it's, it's yeah. one of those sure shot. It fits really well into the lineup too. Um, we couldn't do an old and rare without other four in there somewhere. We have to. Yeah. So beauty. Perfect dram bottling. Um, this is just a, a sensational laugh. Bottled in 2009, so another one, we're looking at 13 years old. 1996, 12-year-old, um, sweet iodine and a pebble wedge is, yeah. is what they've written on the front of this one. And, well, it's, it's everything you could expect and want. This is one of the perfect drum. It's what a whiskey agency uh, bottles as an exemplary drum on the style, you know. Uh, and uh, this is very reminiscent of maybe early 80s in Lafroy, you know. Uh, this one is one that needs to breathe quite a bit and then the smoke goes and it's all fruit. It's just like Moorish, it's, it's fantastic. It's like literally it's a heap of white flowers, you know, in there and, and peach and, and, and maybe a little bit of pineapple that you won't see the uh, this style of Lafroy uh, very often in independent bottlers either, you know. It's very difficult to get these very uh, floral casks. Yeah, and the Talisker and the big boy. TD, Talisker Distiller um, label, when did that come in? Oh, that, the Distillers Agency, shot. so this is before Johnny Walker bought, or Diageo bought the, uh, the company, the Distillers Agency. So yeah. um, you guys will probably have seen the, um, the same bottle with the Johnny Walker on top. So this one is equates to 1970s uh, Talisker. So back then, 12 years old, we are talking maybe around uh, late 60s, early 70s, uh, well, late 60s uh, Talisca. So that's a trait. These bottles don't come often at all. They are absolutely outrageous priced now on the yeah. market. Uh, and yeah, we open one. Yeah. Look, you won't find a whiskey history book about collecting that doesn't have one of these bottles in it. It's a sensational bottle, and I guess in the scheme of, of whiskey and its trajectory, um, it's a very important bottle as well. So it's I'm going to give you a little hint. We might ask some questions to Emmanuel about these kind of bottles because uh, that's the week after. Yeah. So, you know, just to... Just to increase the wheels. Increase so the wheels that while we're tasting yeah. and, you know. Um, absolutely cracking. Uh, that's going to be a beautiful tasting again. Only a couple of tickets left, and they might all be gone now while you're watching this. So sorry if they are, um, but we hope you can join us for a future one. As well as that, we've decided to do an in-store tasting very, very soon um, on Thursday the 17th, yeah. um, which is basically just a way for us to be able to start to gather um, here at Castavino's Coventry Street um, Upstairs Tasting Lounge and, and get some drams around. We, we've just been slowly getting back into it. 
um, because of everything that's been going on, but now we're going to start doing a few more. And we thought it'd be a good idea for the first one to do a bit of a cask highlights. I think a lot of these are cask highlights from the last year, basically various strands that we've opened and we've kind of put together a tasting that I think is going to be pretty exceptional. So yeah. we won't jump into the bottles too much, um, but we do have this amazing um, Highland Park, or Orkney Island, 14-year-old, um, which we've tried and it's just... Um, 12-year-old, secret Highland, um, likely Clan Leash, but an absolutely stunning one. Um, then, of course, the 17-year-old... Secret Island Sky. Star. Yeah, Secret Sky. Secret Sky. Um, and our Whiskey Abbey, Secret Glen Farkless. 19 year old. Well, sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's an absolutely beautiful one as well. So that'll be really good fun and we'd love to um, see as many of you along for that one as possible. And uh, FYI, you know, by then we just got a fridge downstairs and we might have Ooh. a few platters. Hello. And maybe the, the old oyster yeah. lying around. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a little Lafroy dropper as well. We can put a little Petey Whiskey in those voices. Yep, 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 yep. So, yeah, uh, that's going to be awesome. It's going to be really good fun. So get along to that one, as well as that one. Um, we've also got a couple of gin tastings coming up. If you are into the Juniper spirit, um, so we've got a tasting of Brookies, the Cape Byron Distillery, and we're going to work through basically all of their um, non-whiskey range. They're about to release a single malt whiskey um, towards the end of this year. We'll probably do a little bit of a tasting with that when it comes, but... Before that, we're going to sort of jump into all of their um, all of their gins and their liqueurs. So things like their macadamia and water seed liqueur, which is an absolute bomb. We might even get a little bit of their barrel aged version of this. That's a um, belter. Yeah, like show the pearl kumquat gin. Yeah, um, absolutely cracking as well. Um, they've also got some made from gin products. So their slow gin, they've got like a slow gin jam as well. We're going to get some baguettes, chuck them around the tables, have some slow gin. Um, jam and, and butter on these baguettes while we drink cocktails and talk to Zach, who's coming in um, from Brookie, so it's going to be a fun afternoon. Um, lots coming now in February, so yeah. It's going to be very fun, Jose. That's almost the end of the cellar. We've had a long one today, but there's one cheeky little new segment, um, and that's called The Last Bottle. Basically, uh, what we're, we're doing, because we've got so much amazing stock coming in, you've really got to come in and check out downstairs, is that any time we've just got sort of like one bottle left, we're going to grab it and we're going to pop it up on the bar here and open it for tasting. We've got so many amazing bottles open here for tasting. But before we do open it, we're going to give a couple of weeks if anyone at home does want to purchase the bottle. Um, so we're... We don't have any open order. Are you going to... He's going to sell... He doesn't consult me on this. And no. he's going to sell our last bottle, the well, old more... The last one, Jose. We've got to offer it to the people at home mm. before um, before just putting it there and opening it for everyone else. So this one is the, the Scottish Malt Steamship line, Alt Ball from... Jack Weaver's, um, and it's an absolute cracker. Everything you kind of want from a young old all right, um, and one well worth snaffling up. Otherwise, we're going to open it here and enjoy it ourselves. All right. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in. It's been an excellent episode, a little bit of a longer one today, but we had so much to get through. Um, enjoy these bottles and samples if you get them, and we'll uh, see you in a couple of weeks for Seller 18. Cheers. Bye-bye.